Hey everybody, I am live on the 8.10 test server and I am going to be taking a quick look at some of the new Japanese tanks and one of the Soviet tier, new Soviet tier 10 mediums because you can never have too many T62A clones, right? So, looking at the Type 4 Chi 2, this is the tier 6 medium tank from the Japanese. Um, one thing you will notice is they've changed a bunch of stuff with the camera. There's a, a camera smoothing on here now where it, it didn't feel necessarily like this before. They've added a little bit more ease in, ease out on the camera. And I don't know if you can see it when I rotate, but when they render the background separately from the tank, they're blurring it. So there's a motion blur. And <laughs> I've tried to play actual games on the live on the test server. I'm getting about 250 ping. And that combined with the, the new lighting system, which is buggy as hell right now, my frame rate is just, it goes in the absolute toilet. And that combined with the 250 ping is, is the game's not playable. So what I'm going to do is just kind of show you what the tanks are like from the garage. But um, definitely the, the lighting has changed. Uh, the camera smoothing has changed and they've added motion blur. And they've also added some post-processing um, bleach bypass type filters to increase the contrast or sap the color out of things. If you can imagine um, a lot of the movies nowadays where they sap all the color out of it and everything looks like warm or blue or like that movie Mexico. Um, that's that's kind of how that looks. And if you want to get to that stuff, you can look at all of it in the graphic stuff here. That's under color filter. You can change it to 1940s cinefilm or muted or contrast or soft colors photochromatic or deep um, they all do something different but it, the, it's so awful in the frame rate right now that I can't really show you it so <laughs> for right now it uh, just we're just gonna hang out in the garage here where the frame rate is actually decent and there aren't like weird artifacting bugs from the they got clouds moving on the environment now and they move across the tanks as well. And even when you turn the shadows off, you get, I was getting this weird glitching artifacting across the entire ground. <laughs> so it was really odd. Um, but we'll just jump onto the type four Chi 2 here real quick and try and get an idea of what this thing's all about. So this thing is tier six and I'm just gonna go from tier six and up because anything, I kind of, the, the tier 5 tank is really just like a, a slightly modified Chinu Kai, and most people have kind of seen what that's about already. So I'm not going to be looking at that very much in this, this video here. So looking here at the hit points, you got 820, which is pretty good for a, a tier 6 tank. Um, most stuff is in around in the 730s or 750s as far as mediums go at tier 6 so this thing's pretty hyped up on hit points and that's maybe because it's such a big target like it's quite tall um, you got weight of 33 tons 400 horsepower engine so your power to weight ratio is about 12 <laughs> which isn't fantastic um, I drove this thing and it didn't feel too bad but it, it was hard to tell because of the, how bad the frame rate was and how big the ping was so uh but it, it felt like it could get up and go not too badly like the speed limit is 45. the traverse speed wasn't that great it's about 30 so it's not that great at turning your armor is 75 but every time i got shot at i got hit and artillery just has a field day with this thing because it's it's pretty light on armor and that's what took me out i only played one game in each of the these five tanks and um armor was not so great as far as getting shot by artillery with this um so we'll take a quick look at has lots of radios you can never have enough radios it has tier 10 radios at uh, tier 6 your tracks take you from 27 to 30 engines take you from 300 to 400 so that's a pretty good jump and then your turret really doesn't give you a heck of a lot other than well, what does it do it looks slightly different not a heck of a lot and you'll notice here that there are only two guns on this thing and the best thing I can kind of akin these things to is really it's it feels similar to an L70 you've got 155 pen which is great 186 with APCR which isn't as great as the L70 but 
it uh, it makes up with that with a higher rate of fire. And you get about 130 damage, 0.36 accuracy, and 2.1 aiming time, which makes this thing quite nice. Another nice thing about this tank is that it has really, really, really amazing gun depression. <laughs> you can aim down with this thing, and it just looks ridiculous. Like you'll be able to poke up over the top of things and shoot down. So I think this thing will be a it's not going to be amazing, like a game-breaking tank or anything, but I think the gun depression is going to make this thing a lot of fun to play. And just looking at it and stuff, um, the armor is fairly flat in the sides. You only got 35 in the sides and back, 75 in the front. When I did get shot with this, I got uh, any shot kind of in through here will hit your transmission and set you on fire. I got set on fire in like the second shot I got shot <laughs> when I was driving this tank. And that was against a Panzer 4S. So yeah, that thing penetrated me every single time. So 150 penetration will penetrate you every single time. And so a lot of tier six tanks, um, you're not gonna be bouncing too many shells with this guy. So all in all, um, the tank's interesting. I like the gun depression. Uh, I couldn't believe how, how far down I could aim with this thing. <laughs> it was pretty funny, actually. Um, but uh, until I can play it some more, I can't really comment too more on how it plays. But it uh, it doesn't feel too bad. This is the Tier 7 Japanese Type 5 Chi-Ri. Chi I'm going to... I'm probably butchering the living crap out of that. But one thing you'll notice about this thing is that... It is huge, like STB1, <laughs> Chiri, <laughs> yeah, this thing is massive, like, I bet this thing is just as tall as a Tiger too. we'll just take a look here, yep, it's as tall as a Tiger too. holy cow, that is huge, so, That uh, that in itself probably means this thing is going to be a bullet magnet for just about everyone. It's got no side armor at all, so I kind of anticipate ammo rack problems with this. I took this thing into about one battle as well, and the auto loader on this thing is really really cool. Um, look at the hit points; you got 1,250, um, which is it's pretty good. That's pretty high for a medium tank. If you look at other tanks. Out there at tier 7, such as, I don't know, like the T20. That thing only has a 1,000. <laughs> Probably like a 1,100 with a, a turret or something. And if you take a look at, let's say, some Sovietos, you got the T43. That thing's 1,000 as well. Probably 1,100 or something um, with the turret. So this thing gets a, a premium on hit points, pretty much probably because its silhouette is huge and if it's, it lacks quite a lot of armor. It, it actually has exactly the same armor as the, the tank at tier 6. So against tier 9 tanks, I can see this thing getting lit up pretty good because it's so big and it has no armor. So you got a weight of f almost 43 tons rounded up with 550 horsepower engine. That will give this tank a powder ratio of almost 13 horsepower per ton which uh, isn't great um when i drove it it actually felt kind of sprightly like the acceleration seemed decent um the speed limit of 42 i actually got to that so that was impressive the traverse speed is better than the tier 6 tanks at 34 instead of 30 and i don't even if you know can comment on the armor i mean 75 75 and then it's garbage all over everywhere else on the, the sides and back of everything. Their tier 4 tanks are going to be able to penetrate you <laughs> fairly easily in the sides and back. So watch out for those scout tanks. Looking at the radios, you get a uh, full complement of 4 radios. I'm not sure why there's that many, but there is. Uh, you get quite a nice jump when you upgrade your tracks. You get a 30 to 34. You only get two engines, with the second one only giving you 50 more horsepower. And upgrading your turret in this doesn't really give you much other than 10 more view range. And I would have to switch the gun out to change the turret, but the turret doesn't really look too much different. Uh, what you'll look at here is there's pretty much two different ways to run this tank. You get 
one that's just kind of like exactly the same gun that, that you have at tier six with a slightly buffed rate of fire with a bit better aim time buff. Uh, it's 1.7 instead of 2.1. So that's nice. Otherwise, the stats for this seem to be exactly the same. What makes this tank a little bit more interesting is that you can also take in one this gun, but have it be an auto loader. And it was really cool because you, you get three shells with really, really quick shot um, time between loading. So you only got one second in between shots. And then it's a nice drum reload of only 10 seconds, which is similar to like the 5916. If you've ever played that tank, it's got about a 10 second reload for its clip, but it loads in five shells. This thing only loads in three. Uh, the penetration is 155, which is, yeah, if you <laughs> were listening five minutes ago about the tier six, you know exactly this is exactly the same gun, 0.35 accuracy, 1.7 aiming time, just the same as the other gun. So you can could potentially run this either way. You could run it with the stock gun, but I would. I had a lot of fun actually playing this with the auto loader, and I was able to kill another uh, Chiri with uh, with this gun until I got bombed by artillery three times in a row and then I died. <laughs> I was getting flanked by a tiger at the same time. So, But I was able to penetrate, try, penetrate the tiger's lower plate frontally, so that, that was easy and not a problem with this tank at all. Looking at the Church Reverse 36, that is nice. It's not too slow. It's not in the 20s or anything, so you shouldn't have too many problems keeping up with stuff because your Traverse is not too bad at 34. Your view range is 370, which isn't very good. Um, there's tier 5 tanks that have 370, so you are a bit on the low end of the stick there. And you got 750 signal range. But uh, all in all, the tank's fairly interesting looking. It kind of reminds me of a King Tiger. <laughs> Just the, the shape of the turret and its overall dimensions kind of are King Tiger-y. You get to hold a whole truckload of rounds, though. This thing has over 100 rounds you can store in it, which is a contrasting to the three later tanks that don't get to hold anywhere near as much ammo. So maybe play this tank more as a sniper in the back where you're not, your, your hugeness isn't as much of a maybe a disadvantage. But, um, yeah, like if you can get a guy just downrange and sighted, like bang, 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 that... Uh, that's pretty cool being able to shoot that fast. Um, yeah, so that's gonna a uh, quick look at that guy. Now we'll take a look at the STA-1. This is the tier eight medium tank from the Japanese and it gets a pretty healthy dose of hit points as well. This actually gets f 10 more hit points than the Pershing. Um, so that will maybe make it competitive in team battles. Um, it also has really nice gun depression um, this tank has good gun depression, but it's not amazing. Um, from what I was able to read on the forums and stuff, I think the thing is this, this thing has minus 8 to minus 10 gun depression for aiming down. This thing has insane. I think it's like 13 or something. It's like more than the Comet. <laughs> um, I don't know what it is for the Type 61, but I know the STB one is minus 10. And historically it was only minus 6, but... This thing actually had hydraulics that could dip the front or the back of the tank or the whole tank down to lower its silhouette. So instead of adding that dynamic into the game just for this tank, they decided to just increase its normal gun depression, even though it, it didn't have the gun depression, but it could achieve that with the hydraulics. But So that was their kind of the solution for it in this game. So looking at the STA-1, you get a lot of hit points and not very much weight. This thing actually weighs a lot less than the, the tier seven at 35, almost 35 tons with 570 horsepower. And that is giving it a 16.56 horsepower per ton ratio, which is not bad. It's a lot better than this tank at 13 and this one at 12. So your power to rate ratio is pretty decent and you've got a nice horsepower engine, 570, not too much more than 500, but I mean, that did drop it from 15 to 12% for fire impact. <laughs> um, the one battle I did have with this thing, it was pretty decent. I was able to, the battle I was in, I was able to penetrate myself <laughs> because my whole armor is garbage. It's 45, 35, 25. Um, 
and the, but the mobility was quite nice. It got around Himmelsdorf pretty good. I wasn't able to use the gun depression because Himmelsdorf is flat in a lot of spots, but overall the the rear fire was nice. Uh, we'll look at the the speed limit's 45, so it's faster than like a Centurion, but perhaps a little bit slower than a Pershing. Um, 45, I think, is a pretty decent speed. Um, it's not too slow. It's not overly fast. The traverse speed of 44 is also really nice. So it's going to traverse a fair bit quicker than something like a Pershing, which is what I would closely compare this to, because I'm kind of looking at tanks now with whether they can compete in my team battles or not that I like to play. And I'm hoping this tank is something that can maybe do that, but looking at how bad the hull armor is, uh, I'm not too sure. Um, it's not like the Pershing has amazing hull armor either. Most stuff just goes through it anyway, but it um, it appears as though the turret on this could be strong because of the, the gun mantlet and it, the rounded facets to the front of it. It also looks like it's extremely thick, the gun mantlet. So it looks like there's probably going to be some spaced armor involved in here. And then the front of the turret with the cheeks behind it and stuff will be 70 as well. So I was able to watch some live streaming of some other players playing with this thing and shots were bouncing off this and soaking up damage that otherwise would have damaged and penetrated the tank. Um, one other thing to notice is this is slanted and sloped coming up to the, the commander hatch in the top. So that will potentially be a, a nicer bouncier place than if it was just flat flush like on a lot of other tanks. One other thing that kind of stands out in this tank when you're driving it is the machine gun is so high and big with the the guard there, like it kind of gives your position away. Um, if you've already been spotted, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to, if you pop the machine gun over the hill, it doesn't count as being spotted. But if you get spotted and you're driving around, um, it's no surprise where you are because of how big this thing is. So that was a bit weird driving it around. Um, so your turret is 60 in the sides and 35 in the back as opposed to 70 in the front. Uh, it's a fairly big target. I don't know if it's as, if that's that much bigger of a target than something like like the Pershing because the Pershing is exactly small either. Like if you look at it, the Pershing's actually taller and slabbier and thicker looking. So another tank that I haven't quite got upgraded yet is my Centurion. It's a huge target. So all in all, um, I'm thinking this tank, the silhouette is a lot smaller, more compact. The gun depression over the back of the tank is shit. Um, you rotate this around and you can't aim down at all. Whereas when you're over the sides and the front, your gun depression will probably be minus 10 to minus eight. I'm s assuming it's somewhere in that range. I'm not entirely sure on the numbers, but I just, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So next we'll take a look at the turret here and you got not too much difference between the, t the turrets really. You get a little bit better view range and that's pretty much about it. Probably, it change, does change what it looks like a fair bit. Your, your hatch here gets a lot bigger, but you get sloping on it. So it's a bit of a trade off. Um, but you can't mount the bigger guns with the lower turret, so you pretty much have to run it with this turret. Looking at the guns, there's only one gun you really want to run in this. There is another gun, I'll show it to you, but it's not the gun you'd want to use. That gun has exactly the same rate of fire. It's a 90 mil gun with 185 pen and 240 damage, 0.37 accuracy and 2.3 aiming time. That tank, or that gun, is something I would be happy to have on, say, my T44, because I would much rather have the penetration of 275 than 235. I think they need to actually buff the T44 so it's competitive with seemingly every other tier 8 medium tank where it just gets screwed, basically. Um, it is high explosive anti tank as opposed to APCR, so you gotta kinda keep that in mind, but 275 is a lot higher than even the T6 or the T69, so. Um, that's interesting, but this is the gun you really want to use, the 90mm Type 61 
It has great penetration of 218, 275 with its prem rounds, and 240 across the board, 320 with HE. 0.36 accuracy, I find, is pretty good in this game. Um, I mean, if you've ever driven a Cromwell or a Churchill or uh, a few other tanks with 0.36 or 0.35, like L70 guns, you're about the same as them. So, pretty accurate gun, which is nice, with a 2.3 aiming time. So looking at here, yeah, you don't. The one thing that contrasts between, like, like I said before, these three tanks don't get to hold as much ammo. So this, you're at like 50. You get 35 plus 10 is 45. Five more is 50. So you don't. You got to be a little bit more careful, and you can't be as casual and carefree <laughs> with just blasting in your shells out. You got to maybe be a little bit more uh, discerning on on what you're shooting at, or otherwise you may maybe run out of ammo. But I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> the turret traverse is 42, and that's pretty good. It's maybe not as fast as the T44, which has a fair clip higher turret traverse. It's 48. Um, but like I said before, the the gun on this thing is awful. Like 175 is is sort of okay, but why does the Japanese tank have like 50 more penetration and stuff like? It's just, I wish the T-44 was a little bit more competitive, like, even the rate of fire is worse, and the armor doesn't really make up for the fact that its gun isn't really useful in team battles and stuff, and that's mostly why I'm annoyed by it. I, I like the T-44 a lot, but it, um, I just don't find it's, I can use it with the same amount of effectiveness that I could with the Pershing or probably this Japanese tank or even the Centurion which does have a solid turret as well although it's huge so I'm looking forward to using this thing in actual battles and stuff I'll, I think I will go down the Japanese line because I think they have some sort of I don't know they, the tanks seem interesting to me and they're the kind of they seem like the the tier 6 Panther um, going up to the, like the Panther 2 they seem similar to those tanks which are tanks that I, I do like um, Next, we'll jump on to the Type 61, which is sort of similar looking to the Patton. <laughs> it uh, is actually based on that, and when you look at the, the vehicle details for it, um, you'll see it was based on an American M47 tank. But it's just lighter with crappier armor. So at Tier 9, you're getting 55 hull armor, which is really bad. And yeah, there's not much to say about the armor. Um, you do get a fair amount of hit points. Uh, well, even 1600 is really not that great. <laughs> uh, so you're not looking at a lot of hit points. I mean, the, the King Tiger's got that many hit points. Um, and it's a tier 8 tank. But this is a medium tank at tier 9. So I guess 1600. Eh, maybe not so bad. Your weight is 35 tons. So that, uh, with a 604 horsepower engine, that is going to give you a horsepower per ton ratio of 17.23. So that's not, that's not too bad. Uh, it's slightly better than the, the STA-1, but not by a heck of a lot. You're going to get 46. I don't know why it needs to be 47.6, but I round that up to 48. <laughs> um, so about 48 kilometers per hour. 40 traverse, which is actually quite nice. That's so. This is going to turn on a dime, and you kind of need to be able to do that because you're really tall and you're a huge target. So, the silhouette of this thing, um, tall from the front, huge alien tumor sticking out the top. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there's anything too complimentary to say about the look of this tank. It doesn't look very nice. I think this tank is a lot nicer looking <laughs> if I'm just going on aesthetics and stuff. I actually kind of like that thing. Um, even though it's tall and it's a, probably a bullet sponge, but this thing is the coolest looking one of the bunch, but we'll get to that thing last. So, these uh, one other thing I'll mention is this thing is brown. When these things actually ship, they're going to be like a more of an olive, -y gr olive um, green sort of color, um, which sort of corresponds with Either the tanks, the Japanese tanks were in the field, they were painted green, or the ones at home used by the Japanese Self-Defense Force were green. 
I can't remember which is what, but <laughs> they switched it for whatever reason, so you're not going to get a brown tank, you're going to get a green tank. So, hull armor 55 in the front, with some decent sloping. Looks like you've got a fairly... I don't know. There's not a lot of sloping to the lower glacius, and I don't even know if, know if you need to shoot at that, seeing as how weak the, the frontal armor is. Uh, the sloping will maybe give you effective 80 to 120 kind of armor, but... I wouldn't really trust the hull to be bouncing too much of fucking anything from <laughs> tier 7 on to tier 10. I wouldn't want to be in a tier 10 game getting shot at with this thing. <laughs> I mean, only if I could show my turret maybe, but the uh, sides are 35, you're a huge side target, and you're 25 in the back, so, you know, pray that light tanks don't get anywhere near your sides or back, let alone even your front, really. Your turret armor is 70, you have a pretty big gun mantlet, but this thing is just it's tortoise quality right here. Like, not nice. Hopefully this has some sort of huge mega armor, like the, they buffed the, the Tiger II's hatch, but this hatch is just like, wow. It's like a big mole on Cindy Crawford's face. It's like, yeah, it's just huge. So. What to look at in this thing next? So, you've got two engines. One jumps up from 570 to 604. Your turret really doesn't give you a heck of a lot of anything. You get a little bit better view range, and it changes your gun mantle a little bit, and you get a nice big happy tumor on top. You only get two radios instead of four, like on a lot of the other ones. So, we'll load up the other turret here. This is the top turret. That other turret was the stock turret. Both of them are pretty heinous looking. This one's a little bit more rounded, so if you're using the top turret, maybe you're going to bounce more stuff. But I assume if anything flush hits that, if it doesn't smash your observation device, then <laughs> it, uh, yeah, that doesn't look too friendly to me right there. Um, so that's the upgraded turret, and then this is the upgraded gun which looks a lot more potent than the, the, the first gun which kind of has like a like a hammerhead shark barrel on the on the end so looking at this gun which is pretty much the only gun you want to use on this thing well we'll load up the stock gun just for fun which is pretty much the gun you have on the DSTA so rate of fire of 6, I'm just going to turn that off. Rate of fire of 6, um, that's okay. Um, average penetration of 258 and 330 with heat rounds. is 330 heat rounds is not bad. Uh, but 258, that's pretty competitive. 390 alpha damage. Again, there's nothing too amazing about that. 0.36 extra, extra eh, accuracy. Mm. That's okay. It's not fantastic for tier 9. If it was 0.35 or 0.34, it'd be better, but eh. And you get 2.3 aiming time. So, gun, penetration's good, damage is okay. The rest of it seems a little bit underwhelming. Not really. I don't know. I think this tank is kind of underwhelming to me. Like, all these tanks, um, starting with this, you can tier 8 you can mount the vertical stabilizer which is also nice this tank again is another one that doesn't hold much ammo it looks like you only get to hold about 38 rounds or something which ain't that great so that that's well with with, with its slow rate of fire maybe that's not a, a, as much of a horrible thing but it I don't know I don't know man all right, so that's my quick look at the Type 61. I actually didn't drive this one on the test server uh, just because it was so awful. <laughs> but um, I'm not as excited about that one as I am about this one. And this is one of the most modern looking tanks in the game. And there are some real pictures I'll post up after this of this tank as well. And it looks exactly like this. I mean, this isn't a paper tank or anything. This was an actually a real tank. And it's not just some wargaming fabrication like some of the other tanks in this game. So looking at your hit points, you got almost 2,000. You got 1,950. 
with a nice low curb weight of 37 tons. 750 horsepower engine with a 53 kilometer an hour speed limit, which is nice. That's pretty damn fast. It's maybe not as fast as the Leopard, but it uh, the traverse speed's fantastic of 52. The hull armor seems pretty damn strong. I from what I've seen of some other gameplay of this thing, um, you're able to side scrape and there's spaced armor, it looks like, along this ridge along here. So I guess if you're going to shoot at this thing, shoot shoot here if you can. <laughs> but that's not the most massive target in the world. Otherwise you're going to hit the tracks or you're going to maybe hit the spaced armor or you're going to hit this massively sloped turret. Which does actually even have decent side armor. So... Looking at the hull armor, you got 35 and 25 inside, so awful. Um, keep this thing straight on like this if you can. <laughs> um, the turret looks like it's really, really, really got a nice shape to it. It's not too big. It's very rounded. It kind of reminds me of like an IS-3 turret in a way, but smaller and lower profile. Long, kind of like a seashell type shape. So you got 132 in the front with a really rounded, bouncy matlet. There might be spaced armor involved here at some point, but maybe not. Either way, you're going to hit something rounded and it looks very bouncy. You also have 132 on the side, so this looks like this armor just carries through all the way to the sides and then it turns into jelly in the back. If you can shoot this thing in the back of the turret, you're going to penetrate and probably kill everyone inside of it. So... Other than this, um, the things to do with the turret is you get fantastic view range of 410, which is top of the tops as far as I know. Um, there's only a few tanks that have 410 or higher. Um, and your signal range is 750. But that's not what everyone cares about. Everyone cares about the gun. And this gun is quite nice. You get really nice rate of fire of 7.5 combined with fantastic gun depression of minus 10 so that's as good as the FV4202 um, and you also got a fantastic turret so that combined with this thing's mobility it, it's going to be pretty competitive this thing you got nice penetration 258 not any better than at tier 9 but it is what it is right you're also firing APCR now instead of AP rounds so your chances of penetrating just went up and 390 alpha damage. Nothing bad to say about that. It's pretty bog standard for for these sorts of tanks. Um, you've got well, you got less rate of fire and higher alpha damage than say the Russians would. Your 0.36 accuracy is a bit of a letdown. Uh, it's not super high, but with uh, your rate of fire and your gun depression, I mean something has to give with the balancing of how they chose to do it. But 0.36 is is good, but not great. 2.1 aiming time, however, is great. Um, I like that a lot. I'm glad it's not 2.3 or something. The Russians are around 2 or 2.1 as well, so it's competitive with those. But uh, all in all, this thing looks like it's kind of like a, a quasi leopard slash British FE4202 with better armor in the front with a st really strong turret, great gun depression, and it's fast and you just don't want to get shot in the sides and artillery will like to shoot at you probably so one other thing that I found that was weird um, was that it calls me an American now instead of just an NA <laughs> now I'm a US I'm not from the US um, another thing that seemingly has changed is in the service record I used to be 5353. 53. That was my last time I checked. Now I'm at suddenly I'm at 6845. So I don't know if they've janked around with the uh, the personal rating stuff, but um, it seems as though my personal rating just went up to almost 7,000. So I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to translate through or or whatever to the 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 actual server, the live server, but we'll see how that goes. But uh, one of the, the other things that I'd like to mention is when you're actually playing, it looks like you can zoom out. The, like the, the, when you're, we were playing before, you get one view where it would kind of hover above the tank and you could see sort of the barrel. And then you could zoom out like one click, two click. 
Now it looks like they've added about three or four states to the zoom, so you can zoom out a fair... I don't know if it's a fair bit more. It looks like you can zoom out more, and there's more stages involved with how much you can zoom out. So it it's a little bit... You get a little bit more granularity with uh, the zooming, and it looks like they smoothed it with um, the easing in and the easing out of stuff. Like one, two, three... One, two, three... But what you get in the garage is different from what you get in the game, but I don't really know if you can see that, but when you're rotating around here, like, you can... It's not disorienting when you're in the garage, but when I was in the game, having motion blur on was really disorienting. <laughs> um, it looked neat, but it was maybe something that I need to get used to, as opposed to... Um, whether it actually made me sick or not. It, it, I don't think it... I don't know what sort of post-processing effect, like... It's definitely a post effect, but I don't know how hard that's hitting my computer because I don't have the top, top end of a computer. Um, it is decent. Like, I'm running on a quad core i7, but my, my graphics card is about three and a half years old, so I, I can't even run the game at like full 1080p. Um, I run it at 1440 by 900. So, that is one of the things that's kind of weird and it looks like the the clouds that are drawing on the ground um there looked like there was a bit of weird specularity like they're using spec maps on the ground and stuff so there's a, a bunch of combining graphical glitches because they've revamped the lighting system in this patch and i don't think they messed around with the physics but in this patch you also should be getting being able to shoot through objects i didn't get to actually test that but that's something else that could and should probably be in this patch as well so that's the kind of like if you get on the live server like um if you're in a, if you're in the north american sort of hemisphere if you're mexico or canada or the united states um my ping was really bad and my computer did not run this game well and even the people i was watching streaming it they were having massive problems and had to turn off the entire shadowing system and even drop a lot of their stats down to low just to get it to run properly so i think this patch is going to maybe be a while in the tweak phase um to make sure it runs well on all the systems um because even when i turned my shadow levels to low <laughs> um i still had huge problems where weird artifacting and glitching and stuff so and even when i turned them off i was still getting um uh, some weird camera based effects that were causing this black shadow creature to try and creep up on the back of my tank on the ground and it was really odd so there's a bit of work to get to get done there i'm pretty sure it's not just a, a thing that's uh, problematic with my computer because um, i've seen other people have that problem so another thing that they've upgraded is their anti-aliasing they've added a new version of that um not sure what else in the settings is completely different other than the color filter stuff their post their post processing the motion blur effect i can turn this on you can maybe see what this stuff sort of does so Basically, this is basically kind of turning World of Tanks into like a, a 40s photo slash Instagram um, filter. You can see that there's a not too much vignetting around the outside, so that one looks kind of neat. <laughs> we'll take a look at the muted effects. That kind of does the same thing, but it looks like the background has less color in it. We'll look at contrast and I assume this is just gonna like make the darks darker and the, the lights lighter so look at that there's a lot of contrast there this is kind of more like world of tanks battlefield 4 because they use tons of bleach bypass filters in that game to make it look how it looks um, this one looks more similar to the other one this might look neat if you're out in a desert or something. <laughs> that is soft colors. And then you've got photochromatic. This looks... I don't know. 
it looks like the tank has kept retained its color, but the background has sort of got its its uh, color saturation sucked out. And now we'll look at deep. And whoa. Deep kind of took that and pushed it even further, so you've got warm colors on your tank, or warm colors in the game, and then everything else that was a cooler color or is dark was just pushed and made darker and cooler. So that's kind of interesting looking. Um, if I make my tank green, I think there's definitely, with the render passing, something that is making the tank brighter and making it pop more versus what is rendered in the environment, because the tank is always rendered after. So, anyway, enough of my blathering and showing you the filters here. Um, this video's gone on for about 40 minutes now, so this is a, a look at the Japanese tanks. I'm going to quickly pop over here and load up the because we needed it, <laughs> the Object 430. So I will actually quickly do one thing here. Give me one sec. Alrighty, so Object 430. I'm going to mostly just compare this to its uh, two other brethren that are extremely similar to it. Um, unfortunately for me, this is probably the one I would like to drive the most out of all of them. Um, I know the Object 140 has better gun depression than the T-62A. Um, this thing seems to have the armor out of the bunch. But unfortunately, the way it's set up in the tech trees, you have to go through the pancake tanks on to get to it. Um, I would much rather be able to <laughs> go through the T-54 and branch up to there because I, I didn't like the A-44 very much. A lot of people do like it, but I hated it. So... I've sold it for right now, and at some point I might grind through it more to get the Object 416, which I think is a much better tank. Um, but I haven't gone through to get that, which will force me to get the Object 432 to get to the Object 430. So once I free EXP through these two to get this, then I will probably be stuck with either the T62A or the Object 140. But I'm going to take a look at this thing regardless. Um, so 1900 hit points, and which is the same as the Object 140, and 50 less than the T62A. One thing you'll notice almost immediately is this thing is, the profile in this thing is small. The Object 140 is a lot taller, and the T62A is even taller than that. So you kind of get a, a shrinking tank sort of syndrome here. But one thing you will notice is the the turret does kind of shift more to the middle of the tank than it does on the T-62A. You also have fairly small hatches on the top. Not very prominent, really. Turret's just small in general. So, hit points very similar to the other one there. Um, your weight is 35 tons, 580, 580 engine horsepower. That is pretty much exactly the same as these guys. You got, your speed limit is the same as Object 140 at 55. Your traverse speed of 52, however, is a little bit slower than these two. So your traverse speed suffers a bit in the Object 430, but that's kind of at the expense of having 120 frontal armor and 248 turret which is superior to what you get on the T-62A and the Object 140. You get more armor, and it's lower profile, less of a target, and it's more of a kind of like a triangle shape with even flatter spots here. So if anything hits that, it's going to bounce, maybe clip the side of the turret and go bye-bye. It -bye. looks like there's major amount of sloping going on here. It looks like it's more heavily sloped than, definitely more sloped than the T-62A, and just a lower profile, more sloping than the Object 140. So, anyone who rushed out and got the Object 140, is guess what? You don't you don't have the best armor and sloping tank anymore. You got a higher profile tank with worse sloping armor. <laughs> so it seems like every medium tank that they come out with after the T-62A seems to just kind of like push the T-62A further into the background, which is kind of funny. So, the 
frontal armor is is 120, your side armor is 80, and your rear armor is 40, and you also do get log. Um, one thing that... One second. Ah. You get log on all these tanks, but the it looks like... Nope, the log looks like it's the same size, so you're not getting cheaped out on the size of your log. It looks like this log's a little bit worn out. Um, looks like you're getting a nice, fresh, fresher cut log on the Object 140. Um, perhaps that's something that you could change in your exterior modification stuff if you wanted a, a more used log as opposed to a, a more fresh log. Um, but you'll hit, you probably have to partition Wargaming for some sort of feature like that. Um, but I think that's probably one of the most important things that should go into these tanks. More logs um, make a lot of players happy, I think. So we'll move on to the rest of the stats here. The turret is just better all around than all these other tanks. You get 248 instead of 240. And... Slightly worse side armor on the, ob the object 140's turret, but at the end of the day here, it's really just about the guns, and all these tanks are pretty much running the same gun. There isn't any difference between this, like it's, I right click on here, the same gun pops up. There's no difference at all um, between this gun and the other tank's guns. So you get 8.7 rate of fire. Just want to make sure this is accurate. It doesn't look like it's popping up any other gun, so it looks like you're getting exactly the same gun, no matter which tank you choose. It's really just that on this tank you get a much smaller profile with more sloping, a better turret, better armor, and slightly worse turret traverse. At least compared to the T62A's 48, you're only getting 40. But it does look like on the Object 140, your rate of fire goes up to 9.09. .09, whereas on the Object 430, you're getting a nerf of down to 8.7. And yeah, so it looks like the gun has got a, a rate of fire nerf to make it not as competitive as far as how fast it can shoot. But your view range is pretty much the same across the board. The T62A gets a better radio, so if you'd rather have a better radio, then maybe this is the tank for you. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, you're also, f yeah, you don't get to hold too many rounds in this tank, but that doesn't look like it's too much different from this tank. This one, the Object 140 only holds 50. This one gets to hold 50. This one gets to hold 50. So you're not at any disadvantage as far as how much ammo you can hold, but uh, all in all, it's it's nice just to be able to pop between these three tanks and kind of see just how much smaller this thing is. Just that it's so much tinier. Looking at the Object 140, back to the 430. Yeah, much smaller target, much better armor. So, if anyone's interested in uh, the Russian medium tanks at tier 10, now you have more choice. More choice of almost exactly the same thing. So, it'd be interesting to see how this thing stacks up against its Japanese equivalent. When you switch between the two, you can see that the STP <laughs> is a lot bigger of a target. Probably a nicer place to be and drive in, but... The Russians don't really care about uh, how comfortable their their pilots are, their tankers are. So, Object 430 looks like it'll be competitive. Uh, it'll be a good tank. Um, it's just probably crapping in the cornflakes of the T62A and the Object 140 drivers. But uh, that's gonna conclude the my comprehensive garage look at these tanks. Until they they fix the test server, I can't really show you too much gameplay because it looks awful and there's artifacting and the frame rate's bad, the ping was bad, so it's just not worth showing you what the these tanks were like. But um, 
my my favorite tank out of all these bunches is probably this awesome looking tier 10 Japanese tank it uh, it looks rad it uh, that and the leopard one are probably like my two most coveted tanks in the game that I haven't been able to get to yet but um, that's about all I'm gonna say about these tanks um, I think that they've got some work to do on the, the graphical glitches and stuff so when we see these guys who knows but uh, that'll probably be at least two or three weeks maybe around January so that's gonna conclude this um, the only other thing that I've noticed has changed is when you throw on vents you get 105 over here you don't get a hundred anymore and it says missions and events now over here and you seem to get these really cool um, glowy slash I don't know glow effects on the backgrounds of those things <laughs> I don't know if that's too new or anything. I haven't seen too much different in the service record and the stuff. Um, it all looks fairly similar to what we're used to seeing. And nothing else. In it. The one other thing about the interface is clicking through when you have lots of tanks. Like if I just go to all, all nations. Scrolling through here seems to be smoother. To me I don't know if it's just an illusion but it seems smoother smoother to me so maybe they've changed something in their front end um, to make it it function faster but that's about all the stuff that I believe notice it's like you know different than the way it was all right everyone thank you for tuning in and listening to me blather about these tanks and I will talk to you next time